coach in the area. And of course, this will be my fourth, let's see here, 1996, then three games into the 17 season, then last year, and so this will be my fourth year calling Unicoi County football. Could not be happier to do that. I mean, if there's one, t you know, I, I guess I would call th games of three minor league baseball teams. Uh, there was the Texas Winter League, but if there's one team that I guess I do associate myself with, uh, it would be Unicoi County football. Imagine that! There you go. And I'm always the guy, so I've covered the NFL. I've covered Major League Baseball. I'm, you know. Well, okay, we try to give you an NFL quality broadcast on 1420 WEMB Sports Radio. Tell us if you do not think that we do. I want to be held to that standard. By the way, tonight's game will be brought to you in part by Hibachi House right there on Carolina Avenue. Uh, and they're usually a great place, by the way, to go to before the Blue Devils games. You know, they're right there, not that far from Gentry Stadium. I, I would imagine they are the closest uh, restaurant to Gentry Stadium, Hibachi House. Barnes exterminating. If you've got pests, you know, like a friend in need. Or so they'll get rid of them. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, not. <laughs> We're thinking more along the lines of bugs, or as Muhammad Ali once said, bugs. Kentucky Fried Chicken, by the way. Uh, the next game that Unicoi County will play against Hampton, we will be. Uh, last year we did this. Uh, it looks like this year uh, we may be giving some home game giveaways from the Irwin KFC. And remember that liver dinner, chicken liver dinner. I mean, that's just a southern delicacy. Nobody does it better than uh, KFC on a Wednesday when they only charge, well, it's 426 with the two sides and a drink. That's after taxes. Okay, they, they advertise it for less than $4. It's 426 after the taxes, okay? Because I don't want you coming in there with $4. Oh, you need 26 cents more. And then argue. No, bring in, you know, Bring in an abolitionist, and you'll be fine. They'll give you some change for that, too. Computer guy in Irwin, or he's right there. He fixes all my computers, Vince does. And also, like I said, with the town's best collection of 8x10 glossies of extremely beautiful female celebrities. Beginning with Shania Twain and going onward. He's only missing Jacqueline Smith. That's That'll complete his collection and all that. You can see it there, but you can also get your computer fixed. He is probably not only the best, but the most economical. Really, take it from me, worth coming in from the Tri-Cities, from Elizabeth, then, from Johnson City, from Greenville. I think he's worth coming in from Asheville. And to tell you the truth, you'll probably still come out ahead, even after the gas that you spend. Uh... And the Unicoi County Insurance Agency also, uh, Jackie Rogers, sponsoring Unicoi County football this year. I want to get into Marky's monologue, and, you know, I was thinking, you know, you could do, hmm, what should I do? Should I do the sappy, oh, isn't it wonderful, it's high school football season, uh, beginning commentary. That's usually what, you know, you call, that's usually what you call for in a day like today, right? You know, I mean, light, pleasant. You know, we're still, about, I mean, college football season, I guess, begins uh, tomorrow with Miami and Florida. Chance to see how the Gators will do after, you know, so many of their players were put in jail. But uh, we'll have a situation in which today, really, I mean, some people said, you know, oh, well, you got to see, you know, Tom Brady play against uh, Cam Newton, and Newton banged up his ankle yesterday. That was the start of football. Really, I think in Tennessee today is the start of football with high school football season beginning. And it even kicks off with what I think now is the best rivalry in the area, and that's Science Hill and Elizabeth. Then, how so you thought about maybe? You know, I mean, hey, you could even do a comedy. Is Science Hill and Elizabeth then better now than Science Hill and Dobbins Bennett? Is that the rivalry? You know, that sort of thing you could do. And I do not think that that's appropriate though today because there's a story that came out out of Houston, via Detroit, that has gotten under my beak, under my skin. 
And it's this. Look, I don't proclaim that I can play quarterback for the Unicoi County Blue Devils. My eligibility is up. Or for that matter, I don't claim that I can pitch for the Houston Astros. So why do the Houston Astros pitchers, namely Justin Verlander, it shouldn't be plural, just one, think that they can make media editorial decisions or staffing decisions. See, on Wednesday, Houston Astros pitcher Justin Verlander dropped a 2-1 decision to his old team, the Detroit Tigers, who got three shutout innings from Johnson City's Daniel Norris on Wednesday, had Anthony Finette, he's a Tigers beat reporter for the Free Press, banned from the Astros clubhouse while he talked, Verlander talked to reporters in a post-game media session. Now, let me explain something to you. Uh, Verlander also, uh, let, me, let me just put this right there. I, I go a little bit uh, further here with this. You may have heard Verlander was able to keep the reporter out of the locker room for about six minutes. That's when he talked to individual reporters. Then the Astros let him in. Now, for reasons that still are unclear at this time, Verlander said he did not wish to speak to Finetch because of unethical behavior in the past. And he didn't elaborate. And I did, I mean, I tried to go for some social media, you know, some, some internet searches on Anthony Finetch. And I mean, I didn't really see anything. I mean, you could have called him snarky, but you really had to bend over for that. And you really had to... Re I, I'm not even sure that I would. No more than a standard baseball beat writer would I call... From what I saw. Okay, now, I haven't been reading his stuff for, you know, a long time or anything like that. He's been the Tigers beat writer since 2015. But then, here's the thing that really got me. Okay, it's one thing to say, I don't like you, I'm not going to answer your questions. It's another to say you can't come in because you're preventing someone from doing their job then, because even if you, hey, not you, you know, you want to be that bully, uh, you know, I mean, I've been in Major League Baseball locker rooms before, and I've been turned down for an interview, and all right, you, you go to the next guy, but that's the whole thing, you know, you got deadlines, you got, you know, getting the quotes in, all this, okay, theoretically, Verlander doesn't want to talk to you, okay, what about the catcher? What about the manager? I guess there's usually the manager session after a ball game that the press reporters go to. What about the pitching coach? What about the shortstop, for that matter? I mean, you know, there are a lot of guys you can go to. And here's the deal. Verlander tweeted, I reached out to the free press multiple times before the game to notify them why and to give them an opportunity to have someone else there. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Uh, first of all... It is Finetch who's the credential reporter for the free press. So, I mean, but second of all, who is Justin Verlander to think that he can make editorial staffing decisions for the Detroit Free Press? Now, let me repeat that. Who is Justin Verlander to say, I can make editorial staffing decisions for the Detroit Free Press? No! You do not have that power. And you know what else? You don't have the power, although I guess... He did it, I saw power, but you don't have, let's see, just because you have the power doesn't mean you have the right. Let me kill Mr. once said that. Uh, by the way, the idea that Verlander reached out to the newspaper, the Detroit Free Press, their sports editor, Chris Thomas, uh, disputes this, says he hasn't heard from him, says my email's at the bottom of this article I've written, come and reach me, Justin Verlander. Uh, but again, why does Justin Verlander think he can make editorial staff decisions for the Detroit Free press. It's outrageous. And by the way, Finetch, maybe you think, oh, that guy must be a punk sports writer, right? Well, let me tell you this. Two years ago, he was named one of the top ten beat writers in the country by the Associated Press Sports Editors. Now, the demand of Verlander is against Major League Baseball rules. Major League Baseball even released a statement that said, per our club media regulations, the reporter should have been allowed to enter the clubhouse postgame at the same time as the other members of the media. We have communicated this to the Astros. The Baseball Writers Association of America president, Rob Beertemple, 
added on Thursday. This action by the Astros violated the Major League Baseball Club media relation, regulations, excuse me, the club media regulations, which are laid out in the collective bargaining agreement, and the BBW excuse me, the BBWAA expects Major League Baseball to respond accordingly and promptly. You know, Verlander might be baseball's biggest star right now, and maybe that's not saying that much because, you know, they say baseball lacks stars, but he might be the best uh, pitcher in baseball. He's playing on a team that could win a World Series. He gets great tubs of moolah every time he takes the mound, and he may be married to the most beautiful woman on earth. Verlander... Therefore, what could Finetch possibly have done to get under that man's skin? Nee, 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 nee. Hey, here's Kate Upton. Get out of here. <laughs> and who cares what, you know, I, that's the big thing. For Verlander to take exception of unknown actions from Finetch, as well respected in his field by the APSE, as Verlander is respected in his field, speaks of extreme pettiness. Now, hopefully, Verlander is fine. That's probably what he should get for this train. He is, after all, breaking Major League Baseball policy. It's probably not the same big deal that, you know, if he was throwing spitballs in terms of affecting the game, but what it does is it makes the modern-day baseball player look spoiled and whiny. It's a commonplace image that baseball cannot afford. And it's also something that seems to be embraced in the sports world more and more and more. I mean, it could be Mike Gundy, you know, that ridiculous, I'm a boy, I'm 40 thing that he did. You know, that column that he was so upset about, didn't even answer everybody's questions, got applause from it from the shills in a locker room, so he doesn't even answer the questions about the ball game. College football gives you next to no media access anyway. Now he's just screaming at the reporters in there, look at this column, it's terrible. You know what the column was about? It's about one of his players, his mother gave him fried chicken to eat outside the team bus. That was what the column was about. That's what got under his skin. Ridiculous. Or how about Steve Forbes yelling at me to evade my questioning on whether or not he played Maladen Armas with a concussion, which all evidence really seems to say he did. And it's time for the sports world to realize it's not their place, nor would it be ethical for them to make editorial decisions, despite the fact that they think that hmm, it's their right to do so. Hmm. Yeah, I'm Marky Bilson. I got a few views. I'm like, you know, the views of a sports talk show host. Yeah, I got a few. Some people want to ban cars. Some people want to. All right, I'm not Posifus. Tri City Sports now.